Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Etc. Live on the Vibe. I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. Super excited about my show today. I am kicking off a two-part series, uh, Street Heart Continuing the Legacy. And uh, so, so happy to have Paul McNary, our lead singer of Street Heart, is with us today. Hey, Paul. How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing well. Not too bad at all. So good to have you here. Um, you just have to not too long on the 7th of April, so I want to wish you a happy belated birthday from all of us. Thank you. And uh, so, uh, you know, Paul, we don't know a lot about you. We don't know as much about you, uh, you know, quite possibly as much as the other guys in the band. And so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to have an opportunity to get to know a little, little bit about you. And I was wondering if we could kick this off by by just going back a little ways, you know, pre-Street Hard Days, um, to the Harlequin days and even and even back from then, if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are and, and your musical history. Uh, well, born and raised in Winnipeg. Uh, I come from a fairly large French-Canadian background. Don't let the name McNair fool you too much. Um, had <laughs> a couple of brothers that played guitar and stuff like that. So music has always been pretty dominant in, in our household. And uh, I picked up the guitar at around eight years old and never really put it down. So yeah, um, music's always been my thing, shall we say. Um, and you know what I heard, high school, Paul, even, even going back. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're having trouble with the internet today, guys. So you're going to have to bear with us, Paul. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say after high school, I worked in a furniture department at Kmart for like maybe a year and quit doing that gig to join a rock and roll band and never really, never really looked back. I've been doing it ever since. So it's been a good ride. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we can even go back even farther than that. Cause I heard something about an inflatable Snoopy guitar. <laughs> Your guitar career started long before that. Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> Okay, around four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, the first riff I ever learned how to play was um, 25 or 624 by Chicago, and I was probably about four or five years old. So, yeah. There's, like I said, there's That's always amazing. Music that. Yeah. You know, Paul, it's interesting because when I, when I was reading about, you know, you starting to play guitar at the age of eight and – and you know, entertaining family and friends with your little Snoopy blow-up guitar at the age of four. Uh, it reminded me of a, of a quote that I heard once from a psychology professor, and it's, a child at play is in rehearsal for the future. And boy, that sure rings true for you, because I mean, if, there, if there's ever a doubt that you are doing what you are meant to be doing, um, that's, you know, that's incredible. And then you went on to play with Harlequin. Uh, yeah, that was... Uh... Early 90s, I uh, found out through a fellow bandmate, Steve Broadhurst, that Harlequin was looking for a keyboard player. So I, um, you know, I, I taught myself how to play piano and stuff in high school and um, was an okay player, I guess, good enough to become the keyboard player in Harlequin. And then as the years went on, whether, you know, depending on who was available to do what, I either played keyboards for Harlequin or I was the lead guitar player. It depended on who was coming and going. So I really enjoyed my years with Harlequin and I, you know, hope to play with them again, even if it's just jamming or sharing the stage or whatever, but great bunch of guys. They're my brothers, just like my sweetheart brothers. They're great people. So it's fun. Big family. Yeah. Harlequin's a great band. And that, George was here a couple of weeks ago and uh, yeah, a great guy. Um, and so, so how does this, you know, and I understood that you you sang Sweetheart back in 2017. And so how did the whole uh, joining joining with Streetheart come to fruition, Paul? Well, the first time I really got to meet uh, Jeff Neal, we were, Harlequin was playing a festival in uh, Grand Forks, BC. It was called Canna Fest. Awesome festival. And... Um, one of the tunes we did for an encore in Harlequin was uh, Gimme Shelter by the Stones. And I sang the high vocal part at the end. And, um, you know, ever since ever since then, Jeff was the host of that entire weekend. And that's where I got to meet him at, at first. And, um, yeah, 
when when the whole thing happened in 2017 of losing Kenny and there was supposed to be a concert at Shaw Park here in Winnipeg and um you know sadly Kenny passed away I think 3 weeks before that that show and instead of it being uh, a full on concert it turned into a memorial for Kenny and it was just a awesome night and they asked me to sing a few tunes and I took it one step further. I didn't only learn the fistful of songs they asked me to sing. I learned their entire catalog. So that was sort of my audition into the into the mix. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty amazing audition. And I heard that it was just unanimous man when they heard heard you sing because when we hear you sing, it's uncanny, like the, the nuances that you've captured in the tones. It's, um, but you know, what I love about it is not only do you capture, um, you know, capture the vocals that, the way Kenny did, but but there's there's a lot of Paul McNair in there as well. And I recently heard you sing in a uh, rendition of uh, Separate Ways by And it was the same thing. It's like, man, oh, yeah. it's like listening to Journey. You can still hear Paul McNair in there and it was amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> I don't say that. Um, what else do you say, right? <laughs> and Paul, Paul, you uh, know we're doing this the way that we're going on. We're, we're trying to deal with that, so they're so we're, we're being troopers today. But I'm going to pass it over to you. I do have a question for you, though. So, so what was March first, 2019, like for you, Paul, um, at the Club Region Event Center in Winnipeg? It was nothing short of awesome like flat out. Um, I bet. A lot of people, you know, have asked me if, how nervous I was or was I nervous and all that kind of stuff. And in all honesty, for that show in particular, I wasn't, I wasn't really nervous. I knew I had done my homework and I was extremely confident in going out there. And I felt more like a thoroughbred wanting to bust out of the gate and, and run down that track as, you know, as hard and as fast as I could. So, uh, I wasn't I wasn't nervous for the Club Region show, but I will say this: the following weekend, when we did two shows in Regina, knowing that that's their backyard as far as Street Heart started in, in Regina, um, I was definitely nervous for the show in Regina, and that was the only one. Other than that, I just looked forward to getting out there and kicking ass and showing everybody what I could do, really. Right. And you definitely kick out. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's um, and I, I can understand where it was kind of great that your your first date on the on the March 1st of 2019 was in your hometown. So um, and I actually I'm I'm from Regina. I'm a Regina girl. I was born and raised there. And so, you know, Street Heart was just huge, like huge, huge, huge household name. Um, so much so a little little bit of interesting trivia here that, Paul, you might not know. And actually, maybe none of the members of Street Heart might know. Um, so back in the day when they used to have the pageants and they would have, you know, the Miss Teen Regina pageant. Um, and then you would win and go on to Miss Teen Canada. The questions they would ask the contestants, um, they would show them a picture of Street Heart for the Miss Teen Regina. And if you didn't know who they were, you got you got booted right out. You were just a non-contender. And it was, um, I had some friends that worked at the pageant. And they, it's like, girl, if you don't know who these people are, to the curfew and that was the end of that and I just thought well, that's interesting and I remember that from years ago that's funny but yeah should, that's that's yeah. awesome hey eh? so yeah, um, but, and so were you yeah. go ahead say that again you were cutting out um, I just, I just, yeah, we're dealing with a lot of internet issues here today, guys. So just bear with us. Um, I, I just kind of, I was just passing it back off to you. But um, so, so are you a fan before all this happens, Paul? I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes. So are you, so are you a oh. fan for years and years before you turned street hurt? Big time. Um, my, uh, <laughs> my, my parents went. Uh, like, like I said, I come from a really large family and. I have family that lives in Australia and I don't know, I guess I would have been in about grade six or grade seven. My mom and dad were gone to Australia and my sister Diane and brother-in-law Dennis, God rest their souls, were taking care of me while my folks were gone. And Street Heart was playing 10 o'clock live from the St. Vital Hotel. And 
that would have been a Thursday night, I think. So it was like, oh, can I stay up and watch this? And of course, you know, dishes had to be done, homework had to be done. But watching <laughs> that show was, you know, sort of life changing. It, it made me want to be a a rock and roll star after watching that. So they were they were a big influence on a lot of Winnipeg kids for sure. I mean, they're a great band. They've got great for teams. Sure. Good guys. This is my co-host. Great, super great guys. And longevity, like such. That's your co-host. Who are we looking at here? What's Kitty's name? Her name's Shadow. <laughs> Shadow. Pets are always cruising onto the set on this show. We've we've had dogs walk in. We've had all kinds of pets on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, is is there ever a moment where you're where you're just blown away by all of it? There has to be a moment, Paul McNair, where you're just blown away by it all. Well. For sure. I mean, we're um, the the three main writers get together right now uh, regularly, and I come into the studio and a couple of days a week and lay down vocal tracks and stuff. And sometimes it's Daryl and I singing together and, and doubling tracks and singing the right. same part. And the other day, I kind of looked over and thought, "Wow, <laughs> you know, you heard the stories." And you saw these guys playing and you listened to them on the radio and you bought the records and now I'm part of the gang. Like it's, it's a little surreal sometimes, but at the same token, I wouldn't be here if I didn't do my homework and I didn't work hard to get this spot. So. Right. It's uh, something, it's something I, I just deserve, deserve to be here. Been here. <laughs> you freaking right. You do. <laughs> And so what's uh, what's in the works with Street Heart right now? Is there some writing going on? Or, you know, you were just mentioning you're getting together with Daryl, who I know has written a lot of the Street Heart songs co-written. So, so what's on the go at the moment? Uh, well, it's been really good since Jeff moved from Vancouver to Winnipeg because now we're all we're all together in the same town. And at, you know, the drop of a drop of a hat, you, we can all get together and, and do some work together, which is always so much fun. I mean, I'm working with some of the most talented guys in the country, hands down. So absolutely. Um, the the formula right now, I'm I'm really excited for this because the the formula of writing is the same from that Street Heart album. You know, the one that has the heart painted on the street. Right. If that was their biggest selling record, from what I know, and the same chemistry of writing is between Jeff, Daryl, and Spider. And then I come in and the same thing is happening now. The three of them get together, write, and then I come in and go, wow, that's a great tune. And then I practice my ass off and then I come back a couple days later and lay down vocal tracks. So I'm pretty excited for the future with this band. I think there's going to be some great new material and I'm confident the world's going to like it. Oh, the world, the world's going to love it for sure. I, you know, we're just, we're just so grateful that, you know, here's the thing, Paul, you know, me, new music is great. And I, and I listen to a lot of new music, um, but there's something about the tunes. I mean, Streetheart literally is the soundtrack to my youth. It was, um, and I'm sure many people that are watching and, you know, and so new music is great, but there's something about an old song that can invoke such powerful memories. And, you know, when a song can transport me back to being, you know, 18 years old, you know, and, and you, that feeling is so powerful. It's like being right back there. That's powerful stuff. And, you know, thank God that it's continuing on. Like, thank God that, that they found you. And, and, I, and they couldn't have found a better, they just, I don't even want to say replacement. They couldn't have found a better new man. And I know that you were really well received with open arms, you know, right from the get-go. Um, you know, you were, you were just welcomed and people were just so happy to see it again. Because I'm definitely enjoying what's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. As as... And speaking of writing, Paul, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know this is hard to deal with. Speaking of writing, I heard. Uh, so I don't know. I'm not sure what you've been doing during the quarantine, but you wrote a song about the quarantine. <laughs> I was listening uh, to yeah, it the other actually, day. A friend of mine just down the street came up with the lyrics, and uh, we were sitting around a bonfire. Oh, well, over a year ago now. 
and he just sang it a cappella. And I thought, wow, you know what? That's kind of cool. We should do something with this. So a couple of days later, he came over. We sat around the island here in the kitchen and and uh, I recorded him singing it. And I got together with Derek Godfrey from Harlequin and went over to his place and we programmed some drum tracks and I played bass and rhythm guitar and vocals and Derek did some slide and slide guitar and got a buddy to play some harp on it. And yeah, we just launched the tune on YouTube and got a few thousand hits. People like it. It's, it's a good song, actually. The lyrics are brilliant. So it was fun. <laughs> the, the, the lyrics are awesome. <laughs> He can, you can get up and drink a beer in the morning and nobody's going to nag at you. You know, it's yeah. quarantine time. <laughs> <laughs> All bets are off. <laughs> yeah. Watch TV in your underwear. <laughs> right. I'm not even wearing, I'm, I'm not even wearing pants right now. I'm still in my pajamas from the waist down. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> right? Look at this. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, and speaking of, of, you know, new music and, and whatnot, uh, Life, Legacy, and Music um, was, a, was a, a double release that came out April of 2019. Um, do you want a little bit about that, Paul? Uh, the Life, Legacy, and Music, the, the whole collection of tunes that they put out again. Uh, I think it's awesome. I mean, right. the... Uh, there's so many songs that, that aren't considered like hits or singles that I love. Like uh, Plaza Suite is probably my favorite song to sing. Uh, I love Teenage Rage. Uh, you know, even, I don't know, I could name almost every song in the set list that would not be a hit that, you know, in my books, they're a hit. It doesn't have to be a single that's put out on the radio to be a good song. If, you know, if it makes the record, it's For it's sure. a good song. So, but yeah, it's it's pretty absolutely. Cool. Some of my favorites are actually the ones. That... Go ahead. No, I, I was listening to you. <laughs> Go ahead. Some of your favorite songs are what? <laughs> are the ones that not? I mean, I I was thinking this morning. You know, I thought, well, maybe I'll ask Paul what one of his favorite songs is and you just answered that question for me and then i started to think you know what is one of my favorite street art songs and i literally couldn't narrow it down to one and i agree with you paul a lot of a lot of the songs that i love are are the ones that necessarily weren't the, you know played on the radio didn't have the most airplay yep. but um so is there a certain song that was possibly like a little more difficult for you to learn because action you you just you ace that song and it's like it's mind blowing how well you do that song. Was that a challenge or were there any street heart songs that were let me say a little more of a challenge than other ones for you? Uh, well, the ones that have the crazy screams in them, like action and uh, just for you. Like um, I was I was doing a a journey tribute thing a couple of years before starting to work on the street heart set list and steve perry's vocal range is higher and it's 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 in that wheelhouse all the time whereas kenny he's got a wicked range and he's got like this broadway show tunes type of delivery to what he does and then at the drop of a hat he can hit crazy rob halford uh screaming notes out of nowhere and you know that's like a trumpet player uh, trumpet players, in order to hit that high note, they got to put so much pressure on their lips. Uh, it's it's crazy because it's the same thing as a singer. You got to bear down and buckle down, squeeze, push, and try and hit that note in pitch. Well, that was uh, that was part of practicing the street heart stuff that I'm that I'm happy about because uh, making hitting those screams in that style I hadn't done since I was in my twenties and. I was in the garage, you know, <laughs> tunes cranked, screaming my face off on a daily basis and, and working hard to make sure I hit those notes properly. So, yeah. Kenny's a good singer to, to, really good stuff. to, to, to imitate. <laughs> it's not an easy feat. And uh, and uh, I honestly, again, and I, and I hate to keep repeating this, I, I literally don't think they could have found uh, a better singer for the job. Uh, and so I'm just curious, Paul, who are you listening to? Who are some of your influences? 
Uh, actually, when I first started playing music, I was, you know, fairly heavily influenced by my peer, by my brothers and sisters. So I was a bit of a folky in the beginning. Like I was listening to Don McLean, James Taylor, Simon and Garfunkel, Beatles. Uh, who else? You know, Gilbert O'Sullivan. Uh, and then hanging out with my friends, I got introduced to Randy Rhodes, Rush, Van Halen, uh, Frank Marino. Then I bought an electric guitar with my paper out money and pretty much the rest is history. So um, I, I, I listen to a lot of older stuff. I love jazz. Uh, I'm a huge Ella Fitzgerald fan. She's my favorite singer in the world. So yeah, I don't know. I have, I listen to a lot of stuff. Sometimes I listen to such different music. People think I'm weird because I am. <laughs> <laughs> weird is good. <laughs> and so, Paul, you know, we we often talk on this show about, uh, you know, the, how fortunate it was to, because I toured on the road too for 23 years. And, and, uh, and I feel so lucky to have been part of, you know, that era when there was just gigs everywhere and you could literally live on the road and, and work on the road and and uh there's going to be a lot of a lot of viewers watching today that are trying to get into the business and i'm just wondering uh from your perspective what is the best advice you could give somebody in today's climate that's trying to basically do what you're doing always believe in yourself and don't be heavily persuaded by yes. small talk and other people's talk if if it feels right in your heart and you know it feels right do it that'd be my advice and practice, practice your ass off because right. you never stop going right. as a musician, no matter how old you are, how young you are when you start. Uh, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you want to be a good guitar player, well, you, you should pretty much be sleeping with your guitar. I know I fell asleep with a guitar beside right. my, my head many times growing up as a kid. You know, last thing you did before going to bed, first thing you did when you got up. Whatever it may be, whatever your instrument, whatever right. your craft, you've got to practice. That's all there is to it. Eat, breathe, sleep. Yep. Right, right. And so, and so, Paul, what have you been? What have you been doing to sort of stay sane during, you know, aside from from collaborating with your street art mates? Um, how are you getting through this? How are you getting through the strange year where there's, you know, are you just holding out hope that it, you know, it's going to be over and that street art will be back on the road and uh, and, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I, you know, you you keep playing music. Music is pretty much what keeps you grounded and keeps you sane. Um, right. I'm really confident that the the world will come back and we'll be together again and playing music again. And you know, I don't see this going on forever. <laughs> but uh, fingers crossed, right? Yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed. So. I don't know. I've been keeping keeping okay. No complaints. Yeah, I think you just have to sort of uh, you know just appreciate the downtime and and you know take it for what it's worth and you know tackle all those projects or you know or a lot of you know get back to work, get back to you know just practicing your craft like that and you know and just try and make the most of it. I know we had an announcement here in Alberta that quite possibly, uh, and and I'm gonna hold my breath on this one, but they were saying that possibly by June. That will be allowed for events uh, of up to 500 people. Oh wow! So give me hope. I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna hold my breath. But um, you guys might want to consider that if you're if you're starting to book. Are there are there dates potentially being booked, like tentatively being booked? Um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there has been some rumbling about maybe in the fall. Uh, but as far as the summer, right. I haven't really heard of anything yet as of yet. So hopefully that, that can change in the next six to eight weeks. You know, we can, you know, move on and get back to normal life. Right. Right. And, and, you know, I just, I just have to say this one last time. I, you know, these street art songs that, you know, that you've been, you've been such an instrumental component for street art to be able to carry them on and uh you know and and for for that to be a part of us that we continue the legacy and and continue hearing this hearing these great music because it really transcends generations 
you know, I've been to street art concerts before where there's, you know, people my age, they're, they're there with their kids, there's people with their grandkids. And, you know, that's that type of longevity is really, you don't see that very often these days. And, um, you know, for you to be a part of that and to continue that on, we, we can be nothing but grateful. You know, I will say this, um, you know, when, when, when Kenny passed and it was, you know, things were so weird. It was like David Bowie had gone and then Gord Downey. And I just felt like as a musician, I felt like, you know, this is rock and roll Armageddon. Like what is going on here? But you know, when I really think about Apollo and I, and I think you'll agree on this and I'll get your opinion in a second, you know, as a woman who really is a half, you know, a glass half full person, you know, really at the end of the day, we can only be grateful. We can only be grateful to have been a part of it and to have been, you know, rather than be sad about it, about, you know, people leaving us, how grateful that, you know, we can only be grateful that we were a part of it, that we were, you know, in the business that they were to be able to watch these careers, you know, much like your career now blossom. And yeah, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've seen Streetheart and Harlequin play tons of times growing up in Winnipeg, whether it was that, Places like Night Moves, which was a is a great live room in Winnipeg, or Le Rendezvous, which is a place that no longer exists. It got tore down. But you know, I remember <laughs> grade nine, some social at Le Rendezvous and Harlequin was headlining, and I'm standing there front row, you know, doing one of these. And, and then half a dozen years later, I'm touring with the guys. And same thing with Street Heart, you know, seeing Kenny and the guys play live many times in Winnipeg, and then now here we are years later, and I, I'm I'm part of that gang, and it's um, it's it's humbling, and it's and it's really a good feeling too at the same time. But like I said earlier, you don't get here without working your ass off, and I I enjoy playing music. It's fun to see how it's fun to feel yourself getting better as the weeks go by. Um, you know even though you're playing the same riff for three hours in a row, going over and over and over or singing and singing and singing and singing till you're totally hoarse and you can't talk the next day, but you see yourself improving and it's a great feeling. For sure. Hey Paul, I have a question for you. What would you say now that you've had all this experience in the years and years of music, what would you say to your younger self? <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, a loaded question. If you could go back, if you could go back, a loaded question. Let me sing on the air. <laughs> Can you give me about a month and I'll get back to you on that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, what would I say to my younger self? I I really don't know. I I would say the only the only maybe small regret that I have is that I didn't spend more time in. Uh, composition and writing as opposed to learning and playing other people's music all these years. Um, I wonder where I would have gone had I re released a lot of my own stuff or disciplined myself to write my own stuff, which I didn't really do. I, uh, I'm i a party type of guy. I like to have a good time and I just, I didn't strap myself down and, and write songs as a young guy. I was, it was just easy to learn material and go out and play it. So. That's about it. Right. Yeah, good advice. But you know, there's that, that time on the road too, you got to get your yayas out and have some fun too. And, and you oh, know, because sure. it is a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of work. Too. Um, so I have one more question for you. Um, what do you think? What do you think Kenny would say to you? If Kenny was looking down March 1st, 2019, I think he would be thrilled beyond thrilled. What do you think he would say? I would hope so. I would hope, you know, he'd say something like way to go kid or nice work kid or something like that. Good question. Um, but I, I would have to agree. I think he's, I think he's looking down and, you know, with a smile on his face because he was a big part of the Canadian music culture, especially Western Canada, the Prairie provinces. Mm -hmm. Like you can't go anywhere without somebody knowing who Kenny Shields is or who street art is. So, that in itself is proof that you know those guys were doing something right and yeah hopefully he's just looking down with a big grin on his face and 
you know, the music lives on and it will for many years. Like you said, there's younger generations listening to this music and it's, you know, proof is in the pudding. They're good tunes and they'll, they'll survive the test of time for sure. Absolutely agree. 100%. I, I absolutely think that Kenny is smiling down and he's, he's, uh, he's impressed and he's probably just, you know, super grateful that this legacy is continuing on as, as are all of us, you know, everybody viewing all your fans, you know, people were so excited for this show and uh, people, you Paul, like people, you were open with like welcomed with huge open arms and, uh, and we're just, I just can't thank you enough for stopping by today. And um, and thank you for uh, for allowing and being so so uh, you know the catalyst to street art continuing on along with the other great musicians. Um, and we just want to say uh, I just want to say hi to uh, Jeff Spider, Daryl, and Dave. And uh, of course, don't forget part two of Street Art Continuing the Legacy uh, will be next Sunday at seven five on the vibe at noon with guitarist Jeff Neal. And, uh, and yeah, so Paul, I can't thank you enough for joining us today and sharing a bit of your life and your story. Continued success. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Take care, Paul. Thank hey. you, everybody, so much for tuning in. I'm Kelly Barrett. This is a lie on the vibe. <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday with Jeff Neal. And until then, everybody, stay safe and sane. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Bye, Paul. See you later.